Hey, hey, family and friends, welcome to Garrison Ground Logistics Trucking Business Startup Masterclass 101. As we go through this course, we'll discuss how to start up your trucking company the proper way and also how to run it effectively and efficiently and also how to find loads and manage your company and your drivers and your equipment in the proper way for maximum profit. In Trucking Business Startup 101, many of the course takeaways will be straightforward and frank, but they also help you run your company again in an effective and efficient way. So the trucking business essentials that we'll cover are number one, business setup, government registrations and certifications, proper insurance, securing loads, and also marketing. Here, as you can see, we'll cover six sections in the course. Now, keep in mind, as we move through the course, and also, and if you go to the course outline where the resources are, you'll find a plethora of information included. So not only will can you go through this version of the course where, where I'm talking you through the uh, subject matter, you can also um, go to the course outline where all the resources are. Uh, right there on the side. So just keep in mind, me being based in Arkansas, looking at this slide, you will see that I have the Secretary of State based in Arkansas as your primary place. You're going to register your LLC. Now, if you're in Oregon, you'll register with the Secretary of State's office in Oregon. If you're in Massachusetts, you will re register with the Secretary of State's office in Massachusetts. So just keep that in mind when you search your business name, or better yet, when you get ready to register with your uh, Secretary of State in your home state. Now, once you get your business registered with your part, with your Secretary of State, and also once you get your EIN number registered, which is free, uh, it doesn't cost a thing to register EI, your EIN number. So again, you'll need your LLC registered through the Secretary of State, and you'll need your EIN, which you can get that for free from the IRS website. Shortly after, you'll need to set up your business bank account with a preferred bank of your choice. You'll need to take your Articles of Incorporation, which is your LLC paperwork that you'll get in the mail, your ID, your EIN, and also two to $300 to open your business account. Once you get those things done, you wanna go ahead and explore getting your Dun & Bradstreet number you know, obtaining the Dunn's number can also, it, what it does, it, it helps you establish a credit history for your business. Now, a Dunn's number is not required to start your trucking company. Just keep that in mind. So again, the Dunn's number really isn't, it's not a prerequisite to start a trucking company, but the purpose of a Dunn's number is to help you establish credit worthiness and a credit history for your business. The Data University number system functions similar to Experian and TransUnion for your personal credit. So that Dunn's number basically helps you establish your credit and maintain your business credit. And it's also a little bit of a monitoring service similar to Experian and, Experian and TransUnion, TransUnion for your personal credit.
All right, so guys, as we we've moved along uh, in this course fairly fast, so we've got a little quiz question. Now we've talked about our EIN, we talked about our LLC, and also the Don's number. Which of the following is not required to start a trucking company? That's going to be, of course, your Don's number. You do need an EIN. You do need your LLC registered, again, with the Secretary of State to start a trucking company. The Don's number is just purely to help you establish credit worthiness for your company. Now, now that we've moved through the business portion of your company set up, uh, by now you should have your LLC, your EIN set up, and preferably a DUNS number, although again, you don't need that to start a company. All right, now we're gonna move into the actual meat of the registration of getting your company actually registered and active with the government, okay? And you're gonna do that through the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration site slash what we call DOT. All right, let's dive into section two. All right, so to obtain your US DOT and MC numbers, You'll need to register your business. Now, this is after you picked out your LLC and your name. You'll need to register that with the Federal Motor Carry Safety Administration. You must also complete the Motor Carrier Identification Report, which is your MC S-150 and your Safety Certification Application. After filling out your application, you'll acquire your US DOT numbers and MC numbers. But the FMCSA still needs to review it by posting your application on the federal registry for mandated, mandated dis, disport, uh, dispute period of 10 days, seeking out any public comment that might rebuke your, request, your request. So there will be, uh, I guess, a downtime in between when you file for your MC and USDOT numbers between the time that they get approved where you can run. So just also be mindful of that. So once an MC is issued, you will have 20, 25 days to attach insurance. After that, your MC will be placed as suspended for 60 days. And, and after that, if you still do not have insurance, you will end up having to reapply, which causes OP which is OP1 filing. It costs right around $300. Don't waste that money and have equipment sitting with notes coming due. Keep in mind, without insurance attached to a US DOT number, MC number, it's pretty much worthless because it renders it inactive. And guys, let me tell you something. Uh, you need to keep pace with the process. You need to make sure you uh, get your MC number Activate it with your insurance and also get your BLC3 file. Because here's the thing, those truck and trailer notes, they're waiting on you to work. So the longer you take to get your registrations done, the more you'll cost yourself money because those truck and trailer notes will be coming right back around. So do the right thing and get all your registrations and certifications and your insurance done in a proper time frame. So again, the Department of Transportation number, motor carrier number, BO3C form, and United Care registration all are required and work in tandem. Because here's the thing, when you're out there on the road, if you ever have an interaction with a, a highway policeman, regardless of what state you're in, they're gonna look at your UCR to see if it's active. And they're also gonna check your insurance and your BO3C form 
that coincides with the UCR file. And so just be mindful that all those things have to remain active and accurate as you're out running freight. So there's a all saying in trucking that you make a lot of money, but you spend a lot of money. So, you know, we just talked about the BO3C. We just talked about your USDOT number. We just talked about also uh, your UCR filing. So keep in mind, the UCR registration is filed annually to remain in compliance. It's typically 59 bucks uh, across the country. So you do want to uh, periodically check your UCR uh, status just to make sure that you're in compliance. I had a friend of mine who uh, received a $300 ticket because he was not in compliance on his UCR. And that happened in Oklahoma. Okay. Once you get your DOT, MC, and UCR all filed correctly, you will receive emails to complete the BOC3 process. So, again, all these things work in tandem, and you want to make sure that you keep them in good standing and active status. All right, so along with all the regular government filings and registrations and certs that you need, You'll also have uh, to register your vehicles with IRP and also your uh, state's IFTA office, which you can find at your D local DMV. So it doesn't matter what state you're in, you just go down to that local DMV and they will get you set up with not only IRP cab cards and also your IFTA decals. So keep in mind, if the registration is needed for any vehicle with two axes, axles, and a gross vehicle weight of over 11,7900 kilograms or 26,001 pounds. A vehicle of any weight but with three or more axles, if the taxes are due quarterly for any vehicle, regardless of weight with three or more axles. So that's another expense that you'll have quarterly is filing your if the uh, taxes with any associated trailers and trucks that are running on the interstate system. Now, uh, you do have, if you have the RRP. Now, one of those other uh, registrations that, that is out there, a lot of people don't know about, is your SCAC number. And that SCAC number is important in trucking because when you go on military basis and if you haul a lot of heavy equipment for a Sunbelt or United Rental, typically these companies require you to have a SCAC number. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, the SCAC filing is right around a hundred bucks. So if you if you know that you want to get involved with military loads or if you know you want to uh, haul heavy equipment, make sure you get your SCAC number reg registered and active as soon as you can. Here's, Here's what, what makes, makes the, the standard, standard carry, carry applicable. applicable. All right, so we've got all of our certifications, all of our, all of our registrations done. Now, you want to make sure that you get everything insured, all your equipment, all your trailers. Uh, you know, if you got a building, you want to make sure you get general liability insurance on that. 
Picking the right insurance for your business is, in, is important. Number one, don't overinsure your business or equipment. If you have a trailer that's worth uh, $7,000, just hypothetically, insure it for $7,000. Okay? Don't insure a $7,000 trailer for $14,000. You're just costing yourself money. And also remember to depreciate it as such with your agent every year as you return, uh, renew your policy. If you intend on hauling uh, general freight exclusively, keep in mind, again, if you intend on hauling general freight exclusively, don't pay for auto transport coverage, which can be pretty expensive. It, it can add up to 40, 50% more to your monthly premium and your overall insurance premium by having auto hauling coverage on your policy. So I've seen guys say, up to 700 800 a month just by picking the right insurance for their their hauling uh expertise so again if you don't plan on hauling cars or autos your best bet is to go with shelter insurance and that's going to run you maybe about 500 a month now if you do plan on hauling cars also with general freight you go with progressive and you are probably going to be looking at a thousand to fourteen hundred a month because of the call hauling insurance being added on there. It's back back here. I actually went for it, guys. I didn't mean to go so. I didn't mean to go for it like I did. All right. Well, all right. We'll keep going here on the insurance. I did want to add that. Keep in mind, um, when you talk about insurance down payment, dependent on your credit, your driving record, and also uh, some of your uh, insurance hist payment history with other companies, you can typically be looking at a $1,500 to $4,000 down payment to get your insurance up and going. So be prepared to spend that uh, that chunk of change before you start running your equipment, before you start running your company, okay? All right, we'll dive into insurance uh, section part two. The last and final step before you receive your motor carrier authority is to obtain insurance, which we just talked about, picking the right insurance in the previous slide. The amount of kind of insurance, the amount of kind of insurance, all depends on the kind of motor carrier you're applying for, just like we just discussed. Now, usually what is required is a cargo and liability of seven hundred fifty thousand to a million dollars, respectively. Okay. Once you pick your insurance and you give that insurance agent your down payment, the the agent will file your proof of insurance with the F M C S A and all the previous steps are completed. And if all the previous steps are completed, you will have completed. All you have to do is wait. So if you took care of your LLC EIN, your BLC three registration, your UCR registration, and you got your MC number and your DOT numbers, in the mail and you have your certification uh, letter from the uh, Federal Motor Care Safety Administration, all you have to do now is wait once that agent files that uh, insurance certification. It usually takes two to three weeks from the time he files that insurance certification from the time you get that, that green light that your motor carrier is active. So just keep that in mind and be patient. So as I talked about on the previous slide, there are insurance pros and cons. You know, you want to insure your company the proper way, the proper way. So let's just talk about pro progressive insurance pros versus progressive insurance cons. All right, so when it comes to progressive, 
there's low barrier, low barrier to entry to start your policy with Progressive. They're typically more lenient and they typically allow more uh, borderline and questionable driver records to start their insurance with them. Uh, Progressive also covers auto hauling, which, you know, auto hauling does, that insurance costs a little bit more, a, a whole lot more versus your premium, but it, gener it generates backhaul revenue. Okay, so backhaul revenue can be the lifeblood of your company, it can make it break you. Uh, here's the, the cons about Progressive is that Progressive does have high down payments towards their policies and the monthly payments are exponentially higher than shelter. Now, when it comes to shelter insurance, uh, the monthly payments are lower. Uh, I've seen guys pay as little as 500 a month to shelter insurance to, again, haul general freight. There's little or no down payment to start your policy with shelter insurance, which is also a plus. The only big time con there is with shelter insurance, they don't cover auto hauling coverage. Now, the only time they'll cover auto hauling coverage is if you underwrite all your personal cars and also your house into one policy with your commercial policy. And that was something I, I wasn't willing to do that. So I went ahead and stuck with Progressive even though shelter is much cheaper, again, I stuck with Progressive because I typically I typically like to haul cars uh, back on my back hauls, which typically uh, anytime I get back hauls on my cars, it helps offset that cost of that uh, Progressive policy. Now keep in mind with shelter, if you can't back haul cars, it limits your revenue expectations. And also, it means that you can only haul general freight back and forth. You can't haul cars. Keep that in mind when picking your insurance. All right. So we've made, we've made it to uh, just about the mid-course part. Of this um, of this course outline here's a little quiz is it good business strategy to over insure your truck and trailer absolutely not it's not good good business strategy to over insure your truck and trailer because here's the thing if I've got a 2008 Freightliner that it's on the valuation is right around twenty thousand dollars when i look it up now if i go insure that thing for thirty thousand dollars it it only costs me money more money against my insurance policy to insure a thirty thousand dollar truck well to insure a truck that's only worth twenty thousand for thirty thousand dollars so no it's never a good business strategy to over insure your truck make sure you do depreciate your equipment every year with your insurance agent You know, a lot of things going to trucking uh, as far as being successful, uh, you know, number one is safety. Number two is just working hard. But, you know, there, there are a plethora of other things and, 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 you know, variables that help can help you be successful in trucking. Number one is you want to be a responsible, want to be a responsible person. Um, and that goes back to developing your own business system, and setting up a regular truck maintenance program to not only take care of your equipment, but take care of your people. Plan for the hard times also when business is good, y'all. Uh, business isn't always good. So when it's good, you, you work hard just in case, you know, you get, get into that slow season. You also want to uh, be reliable, re reliability. Uh, you know, and it goes back to being a good steward. Good customer service is vital to your success. Being dependable means you'll get the loads you need to get the revenue you want in this business. 
Hey, number three, nobody goes anywhere without the motivation. Without the desire to earn money, the freedom of being an owner operator will not amount to much. Owning your own trucking company will not amount to much if you're not motivated to go out and carry loads and being smart in choosing the most profitable loads for your company. Also, be willing to learn from the old sages and the, the guys who have been in the business a long time. Seek knowledge. Ask questions. Know your limits. Know your strengths. Learn, learn to overcome them. Last but not least, to really make a lot of money in this business, you got to have a little mechanical aptitude. Okay? You may not have to do major work on your truck, but every dollar you save by doing simple tasks yourself goes straight to your bottom line. So, uh, oiling, oiling your uh, axle hubs, you know, changing your own oil, uh, changing your own flats, whatever it may be, guys, you, you got to have some mechanical aptitude to be able to survive in this business. Section four, equipment. So part of part of being smart in this business is picking the right equipment for your business. For instance, what segment the, the segment of trucking you want to be in solely will help you decide what type of equipment you want to run. For instance, do you want a non-CDL trailer or a CDL trailer? Do you want a hot shot trailer with 10K axles or 12K axles? Do you want a flat 40 or a mega ramp 40? Or do you want to run a 53 foot dry van, which is your traditional truck box, big 53 foot box dry van you see going down the highway? Or do you want to be a flat better? Those are a lot of questions that you need to have answered before you hit that road or before you even register your MC number. Okay. Keep in mind that dry vans are 100% no-touch freight, while flatbeds do require strapping, chaining, and tarping. Hot shotting is the only division of trucking with two or more axles that allow you to run without a CDL. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And when we talk about low payouts, I talked about flatbed trailers. I talked about dry van trailers. I talked about hot shot trailers. The type of trailer that historically play, pays more money than any other type of trailer out there is going to be your reefer trailer. Uh, that's the trailer that you see going down the road. It has your refrigeration unit on it. Uh, and, and when you talk about refrigeration units, we're talking about hauling, hauling perishable goods, uh, whether it's Tyson Foods. Uh, Coleman Dairy, Highland Dairy, uh, milk suppliers and such, eggs, food. So, again, reaper trailers typically pay more than any other trailer out there on the market. But keep in mind, there's also, uh, you know, there's a maintenance component that comes along uh, when you utilizing strictly reaper trailers. Picking, Picking the right equipment in truck is, is very imperative. It's, it's important, important to your business, business and also, also important. Section four, equipment inspection. So just like employees, when you go out and buy equipment, you got to onboard your equipment the right type of way. Whenever you get your equipment leased or purchased, get it DOT inspected ASAP. Uh, your loves, TA truck stops, typically they do, they'll do DOT inspections on trucks and trailers for anywhere from 60 to $75. The reason you want to 
get that DOT, get your equipment DOT inspected ASAP is, you don't want to wait to the last minute and run into any mechanical surprises or any headaches that'll stop you from actually starting your company out the right way and start making money immediately. If your equipment cannot pass the DOT inspection, it cannot run on the highways. All right. So, uh, you know, when we talk about equipment, truck, tracks and trailers, etc., you always want to focus on quality over price when you're buying equipment. If you have enough funds and you decide to purchase your own equipment, it's always better again to go for quality over price. Okay. Traditional purchase startup typically you can traditionally start your company through truck dealerships and trailer dealerships. They'll be your primary vendors when you set out to purchase your equipment. You know, you, you either go, you're either going to pay, purchase that equipment with cash or bank financing. Just keep in mind, always take the longest loan, the shortest loan terms, though, when you look at bank financing is your primary source. You never want to be financing a piece of equipment for six, seven years, guys. So just be careful on bank financing. All right. And I, the easiest way to start your company in the most lean way is by going out and leasing the equipment. But it's also the most expensive way to start your company. Enterprise Rider and some dealers have leasing options. But again, they're expensive. But it also takes you out a liability of having to own that piece of equipment. And typically lease options do come with some kind of maintenance program with it. That's because they are so expensive. Lease options tend to require less money down, but weekly payments tend to be high. So keep that in mind. I know enterprise when you rent trucks from them is typically that you get charged by the mile. So before, before you purchase any used truck, always look for any visible signs of body damage and any signs of rust. Okay. Y'all and also look for any, uh, cracks on lenses, any cracks in the frame, any cracks in the uh, wheel bearings and also in the hubs as such. Just keep a good eye out and also be vigilant when, when buying used equipment. So once, once you've decided your equipment, again, you, you just want to make sure you're in the right niche for whatever, whatever equipment you decided to buy. Uh, just know that uh, when it comes to the different equipment, equipment uh, categories that you want to do what physically fits you as far as uh, the amount of work you want to do. You know, if you want to if you want to work out in the elements out in the rain uh, with that dry van, you really don't have to worry about uh, the elements because you're going to back up to a dock door, get loaded and pull out. Whereas with a flatbed, whether it's a, a 48 foot flatbed like this or a hot shot flatbed, typically if it's raining, you're going to be in the rain. If it's snowing, you're going to be out in the snow. So, you know, I talked about uh, reefer trailers uh, or, or reefer uh, loads being the highest paying loads that you could possibly run out here in trucking. Now, keep in mind, uh, the other two major segments of trucking are your flatbed and your dry van. And what my company focuses, focuses on is uh, flatbeds. And the reason I focus on flatbed because historically flatbe flatbeds have paid more than dry vans historically so when you look at dry van revenues they're they're historically flat um and they they don't de deviate but much but as you, you can see with the flatbed uh revenues they they can peak and when they peak they can peak at almost three dollars a mile so hey you've got to make that choice and decide which 
segment of trucking works for you. All right, so you've got your equipment, you've got your insurance. The next thing you want to do is get set up with a factoring company because as, as you start running and you start incurring bills, you're going to need money soon as you can get your hands on it. And that's where a factoring company comes in. Uh, Factoring companies, what basically what what they are is they they buy invoices from truckers at anywhere from two and a half to three percent, so that you can get your money in 24 to 36 hours back back off any invoice that you submit. Get signed up with a factoring company before finding loads, y'all, uh, because you do want to be able to receive your payments as soon as possible. Uh, Tri Triumph Business Capital is my preferred factoring company. RTS Financial is also a close second. Uh, great factoring company out there. It's up to you to decide if you want to factor all your loads. But again, you do want to get your factoring company set up before you start booking loads. Because here's the other part of having a good factoring company. You can verify broker's credit through your factoring company. So just make sure once you get your factoring company set up, Never book a load until you have ver verified the uh, shipping broker's credit. All right, so you've got your equipment, you've got your insurance, you've got your factor set up, and now you want to get to the money. Uh, so, Finding loads. There are a number of reputable load boards out there. There are some free load boards out there. Just keep in mind that when you talk about free, typically free doesn't, doesn't, doesn't always equate out to the best option. Because just, you know, the first 100, 90 to 120 days are the most difficult for new companies uh, because there's some of the probationary period in there. So when you, when you're trying to find loads, you have some companies tell you that you need to have um, some some companies won't work with you unless you got six months in. Some will tell you a year. OK, so just keep that in mind. Uh, once you register with that load board, if you're a new company, you're you're probably going to get a lot of no's. All right. So again, you want to register with the following. So make sure you get registered with truckstop.com. And Central Dispatch, Central Dispatch, those are just field of paid subscription load boards that are out there. And also DAT, DAT is another good paid subscription load board. Uh, JB Hunt and Super Dispatch are just a few of the free load boards available. And also another good load board out there for you is Convoy. C-O-N-V-O-Y. Convoy.com is another good free load board. You want to get signed up for it also. OK, now. A lot of folks work primarily off low boards. Some folks work, work primarily uh, with dispatchers. Me, I don't use a dispatcher. I dispatch myself. Uh, but if you want to sign up with a dispatch company, it's typically a set fee charge per load delivered. And uh, typically a dispatcher charges three percent just for the dispatch now if you want dispatch and also you want inverse and invoice and paperwork done by a dispatcher you're talking about six seven percent guys so be careful it can get plenty plenty expensive when you start booking loads and dealing with uh you know the invoicing and dispatch side of this business So again, we talked about dispatch, we talked about uh, load boards, but a lot of folks don't know you can find loads by leasing on to another company. For instance, me, my trucking company is pretty mature. So once you complete this course, and if you're having trouble finding loads, you can give me a call and you can lease on to my company 
for three loads, three months, or three years. Whatever fits your business, but you all always want to keep the option open of leasing on to another company, especially while you're going through that probationary period so that your business and your bills don't suffer. Okay. Uh, number two, one of the other uh, options to find loads is getting grandfathered into a network by a reputable trucking company or a friend. Uh, I grandfather guys in with different brokers that I know. Uh, just a few good brokers I know, Shark Logistics down in Houston to QL, uh, C Cross Logistics. So again, once you complete this course, I'll make sure I help you obtain and find good paying loads. Okay. You know, a lot of folks don't think about uh, marketing when it comes to trucking, but, you know, we are in the digital age. So uh, when, you, when you talk about your trucking company, you do want to establish uh, a marketing presence and also a marketing strategy. Uh, you have to decide what message best fits your company. For me, um, my digital marketing presence is strictly, you know, it, it's on social media. I don't do a lot of mobile marketing, mar, uh, mobile marketing or email marketing. Mine is strictly on Facebook and also on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you know, and, and nothing nothing flies like word of mouth. Uh, and you establish word of mouth by building your network, by providing good customer service, uh, and and also uh, you can do radio ads and TV ads to also enhance the word of mouth um, of your business. Just remember, always promote your business on social media and in person. Uh, you you are the face of your business, so just make sure you're doing a great job by looking apart and promoting your business like a professional at all times. All right, we reached reached the end of the slides. Thank you for joining and participating. What questions do you have for me in the conclusion of this course? For continued learning, please follow me on social media. I'm on social media at Garrison Ground Logistics on Facebook. So again, Garrison Ground Logistics on Facebook if you want to find me. Also, right there, you can see on the screen, there's my email number. If you have any needs in the trucking business, if you need any help finding loads, if you're lost, you need help finding equipment, finding insurance, anything you need. If you need to lease on to my company, if you need extra training, guys, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm here as a resource 24-7, 365. Thank you and God bless you. Don't hesitate to keep using this course. Go back and look at all the resources. It's some amazing information in the resources. God bless you and thanks again.